Happy New Year, everyone. Good to uh, good to see you guys. So uh, there's a couple of stocks that uh, I just want to immediately start talking about uh, going into the new year. Uh, Tupperware is going to be one of them. Uh, GameStop we're going to talk about. Uh, and these will all be in some separate videos. Uh, later today will be the GameStop one. Uh, maybe do a macro spy outlook. But uh, this video specifically is going to look at TUP and I'm going to try and break this down uh, as simply and as quickly as possible. So we've got our little checklist and let's go through some of the things that we're seeing. So the first one, all right, is uh, Tupperware's weekly candle. So the weekly candle here that we printed, this is not, this is not good. Okay, this is a very, very, very clear rejection. Okay. And uh, whoever is short the stock right now, okay, is clearly getting liquidity. All right, they're, they're getting liquidity within this zone right here. And you can see by the wicks here, right? Every time that push, price pushes up into these levels, you just get these really nasty wicks and these immediate re rejections, right? So this weekly candle, this is, this is not good. Okay, I wouldn't call this a, a bearish hammer candle. Um, but just overall, like the nature and body of this candle being so small versus the wick of this being so large, it just looks absolutely terrible. So I wanted to uh, make sure that people understand. Uh, I don't just say things to make you feel good. Uh, I just tell you exactly as I see them on the chart and like it or hate it, you know, I, I try and help people out and save some money. So I really wanted to do a Tupperware video because I think people should be aware that this thing kind of looks like shit right now. So uh, the other thing that's uh, worth noting is if we turn on the indicator, okay, uh, there's a couple things that we just immediately note. All right, so moving on to uh, step two here, weekly Bollinger Bands. So the weekly Bollinger Bands, all right, if we turn off all of the drawings, you can see that these bands have these crazy, crazy wicks like this, right, where they just make this massive move down, come back up, then you get another big move and then they rip right back up. Look at how tight the bands were here and then bang, you got this really sharp move, right? Now, ever since the squeeze, these bands have rocketed right back up to where they were and they're as tight as they've ever been, once again. And you can see that sharp rejection off of the upper band and now price action is failing to break the weekly 50 period moving average, but we are still above the center line of the Bollinger Band, which is bullish in and of itself right now. Okay, so these Bollinger Bands are very tight and these are squeezing right now. Okay, signaling that, that something, a very, very big and powerful move is coming. Uh, which direction, you know, it's kind of up for us to determine that, right? And uh, part of how I, I build my thesis, right, is we look at all the things that are happening on the chart. And so uh, let's scoot into the daily, okay, and let's talk about one of those things that's happening on the chart right now. One of those things is this golden cross. Okay, you see the uh, green circle has highlighted the golden cross that's happened on the chart. This golden cross, all right, is happening right at a very, very, very key support level, which I will ultimately talk about on the, on the next bit here. But first, I just want to make note that there is this golden cross. Golden crosses in and of themselves are uh, typically very bullish because it shows a mid-term moving average breaking over the long-term moving average, essentially telling you that prices in the uh, short to midterm, okay, have broken above the average price has been for the, for the long-term, okay, which is the 200-day moving averages. So right now, price is above both that midterm and that long-term average of what price action has done, okay? So if we just grab our little measuring tape, okay, we go back 200 days, okay? So price action right now is basically taking everything that you see uh, within this circle. Okay, so it's averaging out these prices and giving us our long-term moving average. And we are above the long-term average of price within this red circle. So this in and of itself is fairly bullish and also happening above this macro support. So let's talk about that really quick. So if you pull a Fibonacci, Okay, if you pull a Fibonacci from the high back here, all right, um, oh, apparently, did I draw this to the ultimate high? Where did I draw this? Uh, okay, let's, wow, that's interesting. I don't know why that's there. 
Uh, let's move this down here because that's where that's supposed to be. So it's taken from the high back here, all right, in 2020. And we put the fib to the lowest low that we made back here in July of uh, 2023 this year, okay? So this changes my chart a little bit. That's interesting. I guess I, uh, yeah, I don't know, interesting. So um, there's a couple clear areas of support, even though uh, we'll bring this one up in a, in a little bit here. So this green box here has just been a clear area of support for a very long time, uh, ever since we've broken above it back here in uh, December. So at the beginning of December, we broke above this green box and used it as support multiple times before making this big push off, right? So this uh, 180 to 190 spot is gonna be a very, very, very clear area of support and resistance. Now, the other thing that we've gotta look at is that fib that we just pulled. This 162 spot, if we take a green line, right, and we just match what I've drawn here at 162, okay? This is a very, very, very key spot for horizontal support, okay? This is your macro 236. If we break below this 236, that would be very bad, okay? That would signal to me that we're very likely to come back down here and fill this gap that we've left at uh, basically a dollar, okay? A dollar and change. So I'm just looking at this and seeing two clear areas of support one at about 185 and another one here at 160 give or take okay now the reason i think price is likely to trend in that direction goes back to our uh, little list that we've been working on here okay so our bearish harmonic pattern right here okay you've got a bearish bat okay this is a bearish bat harmonic pattern and i've listed the potential profit targets for this okay the potential profit targets for this all right we're lining up with one key area of support and a second key area of support. So if we were trying to long the stock, right, both of these two areas are gonna be absolutely key for our thesis going forward in Tupperware making a push to the upside and potentially filling this upside gap here, okay, at 380, give or take. Okay, and then you've got this trending line, all right, this diagonal trending line that price action has been following for a little while and we're sitting right on it right now. So if price action failed right here, there's a pretty good chance that you're not only going to test this area at 180, but you're going to test both the moving averages of the golden cross. And if that fails, your last key area of support comes in at 160. And anything below that, we're in really, really big trouble. And you need to, you need to watch that, okay? So uh, one of the uh, last things I'll, I'll touch on on Fibonacci is uh, you take it from this low and you go to the high that we made, okay? So if we take it from that low, to the high that we most recently made, okay? You can see, all right, that 190, all right? Again, aligning with another key area of support and a potential profit target off of this bearish harmonic, coming in right here where our 50 period moving average is and our 200 period moving average is right below. Okay, so this is gonna be like, this is it. This is the really, really big spot. You know, we slip below this and things are in really big trouble. You slip below 160 and this thing is, we're, we're in big, big, big trouble. So everybody needs to be aware of what's going on with TUP. Uh, just in my opinion, it doesn't look very good right now. Okay, again, just my opinion, it does not look very good right now. That's not to say that things can't change in an instant if we ultimately held this support. Okay, if we turn on our indicators, this is kind of where I'm seeing everything uh, as clear as I possibly can. So in this instance, all right, I see the RSI is right at the center line. Okay, right as we're about to test these support. And you can see that price action, since we broke above it back here, doesn't really like being below the center line and doesn't spend a lot of time below that. If the RSI fails the center here, uh, I think we're in very, very serious trouble and you could see it come all the way down into the bear zone. Uh, inherently basically signaling a potential shift in this trend. Okay, now ultimately this trend still hasn't really achieved anything. So uh, what do I mean by that, right? You've got your low, your high, your higher low, but we haven't made any higher high, right? And so if we uh, zoom everything out, and we actually look at kind of like our, our macro trend of things, right? Like this is a lot easier to see where you've got your high, your low, your lower high, your lower low, your lower high, your lower low, your lower high, lower low, 
lower high, lower low. Finally got a higher high, but you're not doing anything yet. You haven't made a higher high and we haven't established a new higher low. Okay, if we can do one more higher low, so if I erase some of this disaster, if we can make a higher low, right, then I would expect us to push off and then come up and make a higher high off the back of this macro diagonal downtrending line, right? That seems like a pretty good area to aim for at eight bucks. But again, the first thing that has to be done is create a, another higher low, all right, to propel price to a new higher high, at least within this trend, right? So until that is broken, right, we're just kind of grasping on straws. So the last thing uh, I want to bring to some people's attention, okay, is you guys know that I like Fibonacci stuff. Uh, and one of the things I like to use is the Fib time zones. Okay, so this one I will denominate in red for you guys. So this basically just shows me potential time frames in which uh, a event or something that will drive price, okay, that's what these kind of show you is a potential event that's coming that shows a shift in the way that price action moves, okay? And I have one that's coming up this week on Thursday, okay? So does that mean Thursday something's gonna happen? No. What this means, all right, is there is the potential for some kind of event or something that will drive the stock either big up or big down or start a new trend within this square, okay? Now, I am not saying it goes up, I'm not saying it goes down. I'm trading what's in front of me. And just based on what I see in front of me, right, is I see some bullish artifacts within an ultimately bearish trend. And I see the RSI and I say to myself, if the RSI does not hold that center line, we're probably going to get dusted to the downside. And maybe there's some opportunity to play top to the downside, right? Maybe all the way back down here at this huge area of liquidity at 75, 78 cents, right? And, you know, uh, there's just potential, right? There's potential in both directions on the stock, but I want people to be aware if you're bullish, right? There's some things, you know, happening on this chart that do not speak well to the possibility of this thing making sharp moves to the upside. Okay, so um, let's do a simplified version now for the noobs. Okay, listen, 180 to 190 is a massive area of support. You want that to hold as support so you can push off of that and go higher. If you do not push off of 190 to 180, you will almost definitely slip back down to 160. And if you do not hold 160, there is a fairly high probability that you will come down and fill this gap, which completes right here at 90 cents, which is a massive drop from where price action is right now. Okay. So if I'm long the stock, right, there's a couple ways you could try this, right? You can try getting in there, right? You can try getting off this support line at 160. Okay. But, the simplified version is that you've got this bullish cross on the daily time frame, and that's really, really good. Now, price action needs to touch it to confirm it as support. If it fails, we're in trouble. If it holds, this thing can make massive, massive, massive moves. Okay? But the first thing we need to do is hold between 190 and 180. Anything lower than that, and I think we've got trouble. Because not only do you lose this diagonal trend line, but you make a double top and you're failing to find support within this range of price action. And if there's no support within this range of price action, right between, oh, that was an awful, <laughs> it's a terrible drawing, between this low and these highs, right? If you do not find support within this, you're going down. So that's the simplified version, okay? So for all my stock traders and my top traders, just be aware, right? There is uh, some interesting things happening on this chart that could lead to massively huge bullish moves, 
but there's also some indications, some early warning signals that right now, if we were to fail, that this could also lead to some massive moves to the downside. So be cautious out there, okay? All my top traders and all my tuppy guys, be cautious, all right? But that's Tupperware. That's what I'm looking for, uh, at least in the uh, short to medium term on price action with Tupperware. Uh, I have no long-term thesis on this right now. Um, I, I'm working on something, but uh, I don't have any long-term outlook for this stock in terms of what I think it will or won't do. I'm just trading what's in front of me and looking for potential opportunity because so far, you know, we caught this for 850%. You caught this for 130%. And then we caught this for another 30 to 40%, right? So I'm just trading the opportunity that's within this stock, especially because it's so cheap. And there is uh, there are options on this. So you can take your pick, you can play common stock or you can trade options. But if you're, uh, if you're considering the idea of shorting, right? You, you know, options is obviously the safer place. So that is, uh, that's Tupperware guys. So thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, appreciate your time. And uh, next we're going to have a, a big GameStop update and uh, what to expect for 2024. So uh, thank you guys.